Thanks to everyone for tuning in to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel for our weekly Bible study. We pray, pray that all is well with you, that you're safe, healthy, and sharing in the joy of the Lord. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come this evening asking that you would uh, let your word be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Uh, we ask that you would fix our hearts, that your thoughts will be our thoughts, and your ways will become our ways, that we may live uh, useful lives in your service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our focus again this week is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 13 through 17. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 13 through 17. That reads, Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were, we, or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one may say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. Uh, beyond that, I know not whether I baptized anyone else. And then verse 17 says, uh, For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not uh, with words of eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. So those are our focus verses uh, for tonight. Uh, as stated in previous lessons, we are studying using the method of systematic theology, which is any study uh, that answers the question, what does the whole Bible uh, teach us today about any given subject. Uh, why is there divisiveness or contention in the church? Uh, our subject for tonight is uh, Christ's preeminence stops divisiveness. Christ's di uh, preeminence will stop divisiveness every time. Now, uh, two questions or three questions are asked, and we covered one of them last week, uh, verse 13 uh, of 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1. Verse 13 asks the question, is Christ divided? And we answered that question pretty much last week uh, by stating, well, Paul has a unique way of asking questions in a way that leaves one not dumbfounded, but feeling dumb if they don't answer it correctly. So he asked the question, is Christ divided among you? In other words, has Christ, was he chopped up into pieces and given out to different groups of you to, to, to further uh, cause this divisiveness? In other words, Paul uh, is saying to the church uh, in Corinth that, uh, uh, well, let's let's bring it to the church today. Is Christ has he been divided and given a portion to the preachers and pastors, or to the ushers, or to the choir, or, and given another part to the ushers, another part to the deacons and the motherboard, and and all of those different uh, di parts? Or ha have have he been given uh, a por uh, a piece of him to? the missionary society. A lot of times within the church, we act like Christ is divided. And if Christ is not divided, then the body of Christ, which we are part of, should not be divided neither, or neither, however you want to put it. Uh, so that was last week, is Christ divided uh, among you? This week, we're going to try and cover two questions, the remaining two questions in verse 13. The first one was, was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? And Paul is doing the writing, and he's putting himself on, on, in the spotlight. And he's asking these questions, don't, I don't want you to be uh, putting me first. 
I don't want you to act like I'm all excellent uh, in, in, in my speech or anything, in my delivery, in the way that I teach, in the way that I preach. That's not the important part. Paul is saying what's, it, what's important is the, the word of God that points us to Jesus Christ because Jesus must have the preeminence in everything. That's the way God made it. And if Christ has the preeminence, then that puts a stop to all divisiveness. And so was was uh, was Paul crucified for you? That's the that's the first part. And then the second question that we're going to try to cover is: Were you baptized in Paul's name? These are uh, uh, two things that goes along with the first one is Christ divided among you that were a major problem in the church in Corinth and I believe it's still a problem in the church today. There's too much divisiveness and anywhere that Christ is, does not have the preeminence, there will be divisiveness. So, uh, Let's let's tackle these two questions right quick, and then uh, we'll move on. Uh, and uh, let's see. The first one was Paul crucified for you. Now, now, now that's that's pretty. It, it, that 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 should be covered in Christianity 101. Who was crucified for you? It, it certainly was not Paul, and Paul is putting himself out front to say, I wasn't crucified for you. And, 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 and none of us, no matter how important we like to feel, was crucified for anybody. None of us are good enough to be crucified. The first prerequisite of, uh, 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 of, of, of being good enough to crucif be crucified for sinners was that the, uh, the, 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 in the Old Testament, the animal that would be crucified had to be uh, without blemishes, without spots and whatnot, had to be pure. And, and, and therefore, since all have sinned and come short of God's glory, none of us qualifies to be a sacrifice for anybody. But Jesus, who was tempted in all the ways that we are, without sin, yet without sin, he became the perfect sacrifice in our place. Listen at uh, John. He, he spots Jesus coming over the hill. And, he, and, and God, I believe, or the Holy Spirit moves John to make this proclamation. He says, behold, look, you all, here comes the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Nobody else could make that claim. So, so Paul was not crucified for anybody and, and, and none of the pastors, uh, preachers, uh, 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 nobody in the church today was, cru was crucified for anybody's sin. Only Jesus qualified. If I had time, I, I, would, I would talk about the sinful bloodline that came from Adam all the way down through every generation to Jesus Christ. And then Jesus, who had no earthly father, but the Holy Spirit came upon Mary, and she conceived and bare a son, and they named him Emmanuel, uh, or Jesus the Christ. Uh, uh, he had many names. In other words, whatever we needed, Jesus was and is it. And so uh, he did not have that tainted blood. And, and there's a medical uh, uh, way of looking at it and understanding how that was made possible by God. But uh, since all have sinned and come short of God's glory, uh, only Jesus qualified to die to pay the price for our sins. So, so Paul, Paul was... He really hit the nail on the head when he asked the question, was I crucified for any of you? 
In other words, Paul saying, I don't, I didn't qualify. I, I was a persecutor of the church. So how could I ever qualify to uh, die for the church? I was, he, 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 Paul makes the statement in his writing that, uh, that God inspired him to write what, rather, he says, the, when I would do good, evil is always present. The things that I know I should do based upon the word of God, I don't even do it. Even though I have a desire to do it, though I have a will to do it, but the power to do it is not in me. And he said, the things that I even should not do, I know I shouldn't be doing. Those are the things that I do. And if we would be honest with ourselves and honest with the Lord, that same spirit is in us today. No matter how good we think we are, no matter how bad we think other folks are, we still come up short. We miss the mark. So how can we ever think that we could be a sacrifice, a perfect sacrifice? Now, after Jesus died and saved us, then Paul comes along and admonishes us that he says, by the mercies of God, dear brothers, I beseech you that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. In other words, Paul is saying, that's not too much for God to expect of us. That we present ourselves a living sacrifice. We died with Christ. That's what baptism is all about. It's symbolic of us dying with Christ and raising from the dead. When we, when we go down in the water, that's symbol, symbolic of death. And when we come up out of the water, that's symbolic of a new life. We are new creatures in Jesus Christ. And just like uh, uh, Isaac, when, when his daddy Abraham took him up on the mountain as a, in obedience to God to offer him as a sacrifice, and, 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 and Abraham had the knife drawn back. Remember what, what Isaac asked him before they got to, he said, uh, he said, Daddy, I see the wood, I see the fire, but where's the sacrifice? And, and Abraham told Isaac, he said, my son, God will provide himself a sacrifice. And, and, and when Abraham had Isaac up on the altar, ready to bring the knife down to crucify him, a voice came to Abraham that saying, uh, uh, that you are about to do, do it not. For I know now that you trust me, you, you believe me, and that you will not be withhold anything from me. And then by that time, Abraham heard uh, a noise somewhere close by. And he looked and there behold was a lamb caught in the thicket in a bush. And, and Abraham took Isaac down and put the, the lamb up on the altar and sacrificed him. But here's the key. When Abraham left that mountain, Isaac left that mountain with him. Symbolic, Isaac in that instance was a type of Christ. He pointed forward to Christ's coming. That was the first sign of a living sacrifice. He went up to be sacrificed, but he came down because God provided a sacrifice. And in, through Jesus Christ, it was God on Calvary providing himself a sacrifice. On that mountain, Abraham had to give it a name before he went home. And he said, I'm gonna name this place Jehovah Jireh. God will provide. Somebody listening to this evening knows that God will provide. If nobody else does, I know for myself that God will and he does provide. 
Now, now, now the, 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 the last thing that we're going to cover, last question, we've covered last week, is Christ divided? We've covered so far this week, was Paul crucified for you? Now, we're going to look at, were you baptized in the name of Paul? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? Is there anybody that you know that was baptized in some man's name? And if they were, if it happens to be you, something went awry. Because nobody is... Uh, have been, God has not given anybody uh, permission to baptize people in their name. Something that I, uh, that I thought about uniquely uh, to this lesson as I was uh, studying was that uh, there was a time when I became a member of Mount Sinai, I acknowledged my calling, that Reverend Leach, our former pastor, uh, the late R.L. Leach Sr., he used to always get me or Reverend Hugh T. Love to baptize people. But he, he baptized very few. I remember him baptizing one individual. I don't remember that individual name, but I remember he carried them down. Ooh, ooh. And uh, so that stuck with me. But he would always get somebody else to baptize. And then when I became pastor, uh, even though I had baptized a lot up to that point, I remember the first two people that I baptized. The first one was my youngest son, a namesake. Uh, and the second one was a young man named Kurt. His mother called him Kurt, and I'm not going to call his name out, but you know who you are. Those were the first two I baptized, and I baptized a lot of other people after that, kids. But then uh, when I became pastor, then I started giving that duty to somebody else. I never noticed it until uh, now that that's the way it was. And, and Paul is saying that, that I baptized a few people, but not many. And, and, and the reason that he didn't was he, he didn't want nobody uh, giving him preeminence because he baptized them. They, he didn't want nobody making him all that important, putting him up high because he baptized them. And, 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 and I think that's something unique that God ensures if we will allow him. You don't have to be so smart, have a, have a baptism degree or anything like that. God will ensure that it's done in a decent and order fashion so that nobody will give the one that's doing the baptizing preeminence. Because nobody but Jesus Christ deserves preeminence. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter, uh, well, it, uh, I don't forget what verse it is now, but it says that, well, let's see, let me look here. And I should be able to find it right quick. Give me a second. Give me a second. Let's see. I had it. Colossians. Colossians chapter 1, verse 18. The book of Colossians chapter 1, verse 18 says, He, speaking of Jesus, is also the head of the body, the church. And he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. So that he himself will come to have the first place in everything. Jesus has the first place. He's first in everything. The, 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 that was the New American Standard Version. This is the English Standard Version. It says, and he is the head of the body, the church, he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. That's why Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's everything that, 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 that fitly joins us together and holds us together. He's the first. He, he's the first and the last, the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the end. And it should be that way in our, all of our lives. God in the Old Testament says, beside me there is no other God. 
And Matthew in 6 and 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then all of the other stuff that we see that we're trying to get. All of the preeminence. We suck up trying to be first. Trying to get ahead of people. And, and, and when leaders like Paul and myself and other pastors allow people to get too close to us by sucking up so that they can get what they want, then what they, what's really going on is they're trying to blow us up. And the same one that blow us up that and can't get what they blowing us up to get, they'll be the first one to stick a pin to deflate us. So it behooves us to always allow Jesus to have preeminence in our lives because he deserves it. He's the only one that died so that we could have life. And, 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 and so therefore, uh, uh, Matthew's uh, uh, 28 chapter, verse 19 says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Not in Paul, not in Henry Jackson, not in anybody else. Now, I am not saying that baptism is not important. We should uh, go through uh, baptism because it behooves us to fulfill all righteousness as Jesus did. But remember that it doesn't save us. It just shows an inward commitment that has been made. Our commitment to Jesus Christ. But every baptism should be in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then after that Intense teaching them should uh, take place. Teaching them to observe all things, not part of the stuff, not what they want, not what they, they what sounds good to them, to their itching ear, but all things. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. That's Jesus saying that. And behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the ages. And if we would get to the point where we would stop trying to divide Christ by, 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 by having him, he, we, we the only one got him. If denominations would stop trying to divide Christ, that would cut out the divisiveness. If, if, if we would come to the grip that, that nobody but Jesus was crucified us, if we would come to the, to the, to the, to the acknowledgement that that, that only in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit should we be performing any baptism. And we'd be well on the way to cutting out divisiveness. Only Jesus died on an old rugged cross on a hill called Calvary that you and I might live. They, 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 they crucified him and they buried him. But early the third day morning, he rose with all power in his hand. Now, now before they crucified him, he said something that was very important. He said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men. And we're trying to draw a select when we should be lifting up Jesus because he's preeminent. Let me share this with you. Most of you probably know it. It's titled, Lift the Savior Up. It said, how to reach the masses, men of every birth. For an answer, Jesus gave the key. He said, and I, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw. Lift him up, lift him up. Still he speaks from eternity. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. 
Don't exalt the preacher. Don't exalt the pew. But in all, lift him up. Wherever you go, whatever you're doing, lift him up. And he'll draw all of us together. And that will cut out divisiveness. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you again for being with us, for guiding us. We pray now that as we uh, go forth that you would give the increase that what we have heard we will put to practice in our daily livings that that we will remember and that we will share the thoughts that you have given us that Christ is not divided and that nobody was crucified for us but Christ and that we should not be baptized or, or, or count uh, the person that form, performs the physical baptism as anything more than, than providing a service. But that all baptism should be done in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If we would do right as leaders by the example that Jesus set, that Paul set, then we can do our part at stopping divisiveness in the church and if there would stop being divisiveness in the church we could make a, a great impact on the world in which we live in so help us to get the main thing which is so plain in jesus name we pray amen thank you and we'll see you next week take care love you bye bye stay safe Practice social distancing, wear the mask, and sanitary uh, practices are, is required. Or wash your hand. I, I was listening to something uh, today that said uh, the uh, new cases uh, went up 99% in Tennessee in the last two weeks. That, that, that's dangerous. So take care, and we'll be back here Sunday morning. Bye-bye.